Okay, everybody, this is part seven of the Cooper Sam. Ron gave her a number for a psychiatrist in Melbourne who specialises in ch childhood trauma. Ron also told, said that it is hard to find out what is wrong with you, with the problems you have or have if there aren't any med aren't any and medic any medication that could be dangerous and medication could be dangerous if I prescribe any at this moment. Harriet said, Thank you, but she was concerned she would like to like this forever. She should be like this forever. Ron said, if it doesn't work in five weeks of seeing the psychiatrist, come and see me for another assessment. She was grateful and thanked Ron for his trouble to listen to her. Sally was looking after a Kenyan runner who was punched in the eye on the way to the, to the AIS Canberra for an athletics competition. He was feeling groggy, so they made an appointment for him to see Sally at the Cooper's clinic. Abisa Umundi was his name, and when he got to the clinic, he had to fill, in, fill out a form with all, his, with all his details on it. Then he had to wait 10 minutes and Sally then called him in. First, he had to cover his left eye and the right, then the right eye and after that, they checked his eye pressure. Then Sally checked out, checked out if the punch caused by any major damage to the eye and she noticed that the eye had been pushed back about five centimetres and needed eye surgery almost immediately and he'll go blind or something much worse, which means he had to miss the athletics meet, which made him very furious. I don't want to fucking miss the meeting camera. I don't want to fucking miss it. Oh, what are you doing? What are you making me miss it for? Then Abisa started to yell really horribly. As I said, why do you want to fucking make me miss it, bro? Why do you want me to miss it? Because this athletic meet cost him $450, $655 for the accommodation. Over 1000 bucks, and I'm missing it. Hope I can get my money back for it. I can guarantee. Sally didn't know quite what to do because she knew it wasn't her fault. And Abisa said it wasn't but it wasn't, but Sally didn't know what to, didn't want to go out and pick any fights with people who are responsible because these things happen. And she was sure that he would get his money back because, because he can't be held heartless, she thought. So Abisa calmed down. See, you'll get your money back. Calm down. Bisa calmed down, but that didn't mean he was going to let things go. When he was better, if the man was who, who punched him really knew what to do, he should never try to cross the path, path at any stage of a Bisa's recovery. Meanwhile, David looked after Jack Delahunty, who walks with a limp and a crazy laugh. <laughs> you see, he has autism, which made him obsessed with what people say in the, in the nightclubs. So that means whether he was at home or work or at a friend's house, he will talk as if he was at a party. How you going, mate? How you going, dudes? And some people got annoyed by that. Today, he said to David, I was cruising around looking for chicks and I found out that I really liked when she swore at me and that's rude. And, and that's rude, hey, Dave? But, 
But what he was, what what he was really there for was a fortnightly checkup and an injection to control his angry temper. Oh, you fuck! I'm gonna get rid of it fucking somehow. That could happen if he went off his meds. If if you if you knew him. David gave him a test, both men, mental and physical, and both or, and both turned out all right. And then he was ready to give the injection, and he yelled, R A P E, I'm being raped! But everyone who knew him just let it s slide, because kids laugh at him because they don't know what he's really like. Sally let Sue sit in on, the, her, del on the, her delivering a single mother of two third baby. And Sue was very excited about this. Oh my God, this is exciting. There was a lot of screaming and shouting and Sue found it hard not to take it personally. Eventually, the baby came out and it was her third boy and Sue was happy and she was in that she was involved with that. It made her glad she wants to be a midwife and help bring new people into the world. The mother was stunned and called him Jack and couldn't wait to bring him home to Josh and Patrick. They, Sally asked Sue, do you want to, nur to nurse your first delivery? Sue was delighted and thought it was the best experience of her whole life so far. An American mother whose family are the only ones in the suburb to do trick or treat on October 31st, which is Halloween, brings her, in her son who claims he needs help because every Halloween a fire creature comes comes out of a jack-o'-lantern and chases him all over Melbourne. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> jack-o'-lantern's after me! What is really going on is that he hops on a tram to St Kilda and and following young girls around with attempts to hurt them. And that makes it even worse. David brought him in to help him get through this. And David asked his name, which was Bradley Kingsley, and then asked him what he thinks about Halloween. Brad said it was cool. Who, who, it's cool you get heaps of candy with, pe with people in the spirit that normally people don't want to be tricked or treated. So they give us candy to, in their candy jars. Then David asked, this fire creature, do you know what it stands for? Bradley said that he wasn't, he doesn't know. It could be the ghost of his great-grandfather or my great-grandmother said it was a Halloween Scrooge. He, was, he said, if my grandmother's family breathed the word of Halloween that he might, that he will terrorise the scared one of the family, that, and that is me, said Bradley. Then David asked, what does he say? To you when he is chasing you. He says, I want to destroy your young life. Halloween is a scam. Don't run away or I will get you, Bradley. Then Bradley asked, um, no, 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 no. then David asked Bradley, why you, why not Joshua? And Bradley replied, because I am more of a shy boy than he is. And David became more intrigued and under, to understand 
what this fire creature really wants him wants from him and started to ask questions like do you recognize the voice like is it a friend's voice or something like that Bradley replied no it's a voice I have never heard like some old man or something like that then David asked is he on a commercial that you see on television or a voice from the radio it is is it it is probably there somewhere but i can't put my finger on it like daddy would say david asked it's not your daddy is it bradley replied no I don't know, I don't know who is who is who it is, but I know he is evil. Mummy told me so. David said, If I ask you these questions, I can figure out what is wrong with you and how I could help you. David asked, Could it be a kid you hate at school? Because kids can be very cruel, you know. Bradley said, no, it is not anymore anyone from school. There are some people who want to bully me, but I don't think that they are fire creatures. David told him they are not the creature and you must know that there is something wrong with your brain, which is forcing the creature to come out every Halloween. But we, we need to control the voice. We are using talk therapy, which I believe is, to find out if we could find a way to control it. David added, I don't want to prescribe drugs unless I know what is really going on with you. The wrong drugs give you horrible side effects and I want to figure out your mind so we could rally together to kill this fire creature in your mind every Halloween. Bradley said that the creature could be a voice from some spirit that doesn't know me and wants me to stop celebrating this day. David said, I see you're tensing up. So we will finish up and we will meet in four weeks and I might have a solution to your problem. I will look into, you, into what you told me and I will try to figure out your diagnosis. David said goodbye to the family and began to figure out, began to try to figure out what is wrong with Bradley. Sue was busy with a 44-year-old woman receiving her Hep B booster shot because she works in a business that has a lot of syringes in, in easy to be pricked spots. Her name was Pam Gordon who worked in a mental health housing complex called Pathway Garden. She served lunch and dinner every weekday and made, and made them cakes as the occasion, occasional special treat because Pam thought these people need to, be, need to have a positive look towards the future. Pam told Sue sometimes she wonders if it all is worth it. And then when she receives thank you from the people who are grateful it makes it all worthwhile. Today she brought the Coopers a rhubarb pie because she thought the Coopers were similar to her in every way. And, and that made her feel really good. Sue and Pam talked about, talked for about 20 minutes about the different ways to help people in the way that you do best. Pam asked Sue to visit her work 
and see the way way that they help out there. And it could introduce her to some new patients because Pam said some of these people could use doctors that really care for them and not the paycheck that comes from it. Sue told her that it might be nice to chase up some some more work. So she said she asked her father and boss Rob if she could visit and see if people would be grateful to see us there. Sue told Pam that she should help people in the way you want and not sit in your house just helping yourself. Pam agreed and said, I hope to see you there and enjoy the pie, Sue. Just sign just signed off. Just sighed a bit of relief. Woo. That she is doing well and not too sick. Okay, so that's the end of part seven.